restate what Katina said. If you have your microphone still um, unmuted, do you think you could mute it? Because uh, I can hear, I can hear noises from somewhere as well. So to to mute your microphone, if you just hover in the left-hand bottom corner of the screen, you'll see a little microphone, and if you click on it, it'll automatically mute. Hoping you can all hear me. Perhaps Katina could give me a thumbs up to say she can hear me. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. Okay, I'm going to start by um, doing a presentation um, around making learning easier for people with mental health. Um, I've got a presentation on the on my desktop, so I'm going to share that with you. And at various points, I'm going to bring in technologies, apps, tools, and show you various bits and pieces. Um, so I'm going to go into screen sharing mode now. When I screen share, I don't actually see your videos, but I will be able to see if you uh, type something into the chat pane and Katina's going to keep an eye on the chat pane for me as well. So I'm going to go into share screen now. And I'm going to share the whole of my desktop because some other times I'm going to be showing you more than one application at the same time. And I'm not on the first slide, which is a bit silly of me. And just go to slideshow mode and go from the beginning. Okay, so the presentation is called Making Learning Easier. Um, I'm Sally Betts. I work for a company called Ideas for Learning Limited, an educational consultancy. Um, but I used to be and still am a senior associate for NIACE, working in the digital learning team. Um, and my background is as a teacher and manager of um, basic skills mainly numeracy. So I've kind of based, part of my presentation has a bit of a numeracy theme on it as well. Um, I'm not a mental health expert, but I do have personal experience of supporting um, a family member who's had severe depression, and I'm currently supporting my daughter who has um, mental health problems, she has anxiety, and she's had a year's worth of cognitive behavioural therapy. So I certainly know what the problems of having anxiety and getting through everyday life and potentially trying to get yourself onto a course and do a course are. So I'm going to bring all of those aspects into my presentation from my own experience in helping somebody else as well. When Katina asked me if I'd do a webinar, I thought, I'm just going to go and see if I can find any stats. I think that was the maths teacher in me coming out. And on the Mental Health Foundation website, and actually on a few websites, I found the same quote about a quarter of British adults experience a diagnosable mental health problem in any one year. Uh, the most common of those, anxiety and depression. And I have to say, I was actually quite surprised by that. If it said one in 20 or one in 10, perhaps even, I might not have been quite as surprised, but that seems such a large number. Um, and it really got me thinking about, well, why aren't we doing more then, especially in learning? Um, because it can be so helpful to build someone's self-esteem if you can get them back into learning, which I know is what all the mental health projects are, are all about, encouraging people to take steps to improve their lives and make things better for themselves. So I started to think, okay, so those are the two common um, challenges that people with mental health problems face. So what does that actually mean? What factors might affect their learning? And I came up with this list, and this was from a nice document I found, and my own experience of helping other people, and a few other websites as well. Top of the list, anxiety, fear. Fears of absolutely all sorts of things. Fears of being in a class with other people. Fears of having the door class shut. I've taught students who have mental health problems before and I've set up courses for them. And one of the things I would say straight away that has nothing to do with technology is have the door open. Being enclosed in a room um, has fears for some people. Um, and some people like to sit near the door and like to be able to walk out at any point. One of the things I used to do was always keep the door slightly ajar. Uh, but also, there's that anxiety about others knowing that you might, that you have a, health, a mental health problem or you have um, some sort of anxiety issues. 
um, and they might not want other people to know. So finding ways of um, explaining why a student isn't there one week can be really, really useful. And I hope I show that in some of the things I'm going to show you today. If you're anxious about something, then the next step is probably you're not going to concentrate very well. So poor concentration, definitely erratic attendance. As I say, I set up a mental health, uh, I set up a, a numeracy class for, uh, in conjunction with an organisation that supported people with mental health problems. I had 12 people on the books. I am going back a few years. Um, every week, three learners appeared, but never the same three learners. Um, and then they'd appear again a few weeks later and it was because of medication or how they were feeling on that day so very erratic attendance and that has huge implications for the people trying to provide that course I spent the whole time arguing with our finance team within the college that it was a worthwhile course to put on and that some of our courses were oversubscribed so what did it matter if some of the money had three on the register on any one week um, it was a huge battle and I did eventually lose that battle and was told I had to close the course. Hopefully I'd do things differently now um, and I wouldn't have to lose or shut the course. Short term memory difficulties, if you're anxious, you're not necessarily concentrating, you're more likely to forget. If you're on medication that can affect your memory uh, difficulties as well. What time you actually put that training on? Um, whether you're going for a morning session, can you get yourself going in the morning? Is the person tired by the afternoon? That can have a huge impact as well. The person might have low self-esteem and may have low self-expectation. If you're suffering with mild depression, you may not think that you're ever going to achieve anything anyway. And the people around you might not think you're going to achieve it either. Um, it's really easy to see somebody struggling to get out of bed in the morning and get themselves going to think, well, you're never going to make it through a six week yoga course or meditation course. So they're not, they need people around them supporting them and understanding as well. So I took all those sort of things, the key things that I thought might affect learning. And then I thought, right, okay, how can we address these things? So here we go. Here's the stages of a course. This is very, very, simplified before you all scream at me I understand that but basically with a course you've got a course offer so before you've ever got onto that course you've got to find out about the course from somewhere or somebody and then you go through some sort of registration and induction kind of process and then you actually make it onto the course um, and do some learning and then you finish the course and you kind of go around the circle again because hopefully they point you in the direction of further courses that you might be able to do. So I'm going to look at those three stages and in each stage look at how we could use technology to help. Starting with the course offer, I actually think this is probably the most important and when I started to think about it, these are the kind of questions that sprung to mind. How do we currently advertise our courses? Where do we advertise them? And who do we target with the advertising? And what finally could we do differently? And the reason that those sprung to mind is because it's very similar to when you're teaching a low level literacy learners. A low level literacy learner can't read the text on the page. Somebody who's got mild depression may not be looking for courses it might be the people around them that are looking for courses with low level literacy they usually find out about a course through friends and family so should the advertising on our courses talk directly to the person we want on the course or should we try to engage somebody around them as well and make them realize that this course might benefit a friend or a family member so here we go I taught maths. I told you there were some maths in here. Here I went, I thought, okay, let's go and have a look at some organisations and how they um, promote their maths courses. And most of you are probably delivering functional skills maths, either as a direct uh, offer or maybe embedded somewhere in vocational courses. Um, 
And they all kind of said similar stuff. There were a bit of text saying, you know, we deliver functional skills. You don't need anything to come in. Everybody's welcome. We run them throughout the year, daytime or evening. And I thought, right, okay, I'm sitting here with mild depression or anxiety. Would that inspire me? Would I feel confident to go in and do the next thing that was at the bottom, which was to ring or fill in a form online? No, probably not. If I was a family member or friend, would that encourage me? Well, it might encourage me to ring up and try and find out a bit more about what it actually involved. Um, but what else could I do? And so I thought, okay, this is what I would do. I'd add something. And that's what I've added. And for those of you that don't know technology a lot, that little box at the bottom is something called a QR code. It's like a barcode on your food. It links you to something else. And I thought, right, okay, what do I want to link to? And I thought, I want to link to a video. Now, this is my first technical challenge, because I'm going to attempt to show you that video via this system. And to do that, I just need to access another piece of software. So I'm going to go down to smaller screen mode for this. And I'm going to pop it onto the side of the screen, or I might have to pop it onto the other side of the screen so that we can see it. Ooh, after all these things, let's move those a little bit, get rid of that. Hopefully that won't close Zoom totally as well. What I want to open is this thing, which is, I've got another webcam with me, um, because what I'm going to do is get that QR code, oh, what can I do with this? Oh, I know, I can minimise it, can't I? There we go, I learnt something while I was practising. Um, I'm going to get that QR code up on the screen, and I'm going to point, oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, there's my QR code, and I've got a second webcam here, which I'm going to try and point at the screen so that you can see. And I'm now the left-hand side, you should be looking at the webcam image of the screen and the PowerPoint on the right-hand side, you're looking at the QR code. And on my tablet, I've downloaded a QR code reader. QR code reader called Norton Snap. You not, might not be able to see that very clearly, but Norton Snap, it's the one on the left-hand side here. I chose Norton because it, oh, I chose Norton Snap because it's made by the same people that make the um, virus checking software Norton themselves and it's a free app and it checks these QR codes before it actually opens them and gives you a rating of whether it thinks it's safe or not. Once you've downloaded something like Norton Snap you click on it, she says, very hard to do when you're trying to do five million things at once. And then you point it over the QR code. So hopefully, move the thing away a little bit. You can now see both the QR code reader and the tablet. And there you go. Norton has told me that's safe and that it's a YouTube video that I can open. So I'm gonna open this and I'm gonna hope that you can hear the video as I play it. What I want you to do when I play it, I'm not going to open it quite yet, what I want you to do when I play it is I want you to just listen to the things that I say. Now this is a, just a demonstration type of video that you could perhaps use to encourage learners to join a program. But what information might support a learner who's anxious or mildly depressed or a parent or a family member, what might encourage them to actually come ahead and make an appointment with me? And we'll discuss it in chat in a minute when I've finished. So I'm going to start the video and I'm going to reopen the, and, um, sorry, I'm going to start the video and hopefully you'll be able to hear it. So I've used the YouTube app on my tablet and I'm starting it now. And then we'll just make sure you can see it. Hello, I'm Sally Betts and I deliver the Improving Maths course. It doesn't matter what your current skills levels are, together we'll work out what you need to learn and what your current goals are for learning maths, whether it's to help your child, 
to get a job, or whatever it might be. It might be simply to prove to yourself that you can do it. There are so many reasons students join this course, but they all have something in common. At some point, maths became too difficult, and for some reason, they now want to improve their scales. Students tell me reasons why they struggled were because they changed schools, or they had a period of illness, or they had to care for a parent, or they became more interested in girls and boys in their class than the actual lessons that they were attending, or they simply just didn't get it. Some students come with a huge fear of maths, but I'll work with them to help remove those barriers and anxieties. So what happens next? You're thinking of joining the Improving Maths course. Well, we don't put you straight into a class. I like to meet people first. And so I ask you to ring, email or visitors. Or you could ask a friend or relative to do that for you. And to book an appointment to come in and see me. And you might want to bring that friend or relative with you. And that's fine. I can always try and book them up for a course too. But have a chat to find out what you want to learn. What you to learn, whether that's the morning, afternoon, evening, or even online. We understand that people can't make the same lesson each time each week. Or you may have health problems and they or work commitments that make it impossible to build learning opportunities. Hi Sally, I'm not sure if it's just me, but I seem to have frozen on my screen. Is that the same for anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Sally, if you can hear me, just go out and come back in again is usually the quickest way to resolve that um, problem. Um, but I don't know about anybody else. I was quite impressed with the QR code. I only had to put my phone vaguely near it um, and it was instantly all up. So that was quite good. Um, I'm just guessing that Sally's connections dropped off for us. I'll just um, send her another link so that she can get in quickly. Okay, so that's what the problem is. And you're all getting to witness the joys of technology. I'm slightly worried about those of you who are planning to deliver ones that you'll think this is normal. It isn't. It's the first time it's ever happened to me. Um, and there's a, a kind of probably for Sally and I, there'll be a certain irony in it being her one that it's um, gone down on. But I've resent her uh, the link so that you can kind of see how we try and manage that so that she can get back into us, hopefully. Um, and take it from there. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Denise has said she's only used QR codes in the past to link to a web page, so this is wonderful. Um, and if any of the others of you have um, kind of uh, points you want to post in the chat, then probably now's a good room time to one practice using chat and two to um, kill a bit of time for Sally. Uh, just wondering if that's her back in. Okay. Yeah. Are you, are you able to? Hi, you back? <laughs> I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> I said there was a certain irony, wasn't there, in two yeah. <laughs> the person with the most technology experience that I've invited to do any of these. <laughs> it has honestly never happened before, and I'm trying to reassure 
um, in particular Martin and Caroline, who've both got future <laughs> to do, that this is not normal. <laughs> so have you got control or do I need to hand it back to you again? Uh, you need to hand it back. I don't have it. Okay, that's fine. Oh, okay. I don't know, actually. Yeah, I have got it. Okay, then um, we can't see your screen at the moment, but uh, I'm sure you can collect, correct that shortly. Okay. I'm sharing my screen back with you. I think it's because I have so many technologies attached to this computer. So many different things running. Um, but as I've just lost my internet, I've also lost all the websites that I was going to show you. So maybe that'll make a bit of a difference. Okay, so I was showing you this video and I did manage to pause it. So I'll restart and carry on. And so we offer flexible learning opportunities. We'll need to find out what math skills you already have. You can do it afterwards at home. You'll find that our classes are very different from anything you've experienced at school. Sally, that's really shaky. I don't know if you want to skip the video. I encourage learners to use mobile phones, tablets, or our computers. So, if you've watched the video and you've met me, you have a phone call and book an appointment, and I look forward to meeting you. Okay, so that is the video as opposed to what we were looking at, which was the actual piece of writing. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute and I'm going to remember how to get into the chat pane. And I'm going to suggest that we now talk about um the things that we could say in a video what was in there that's better than just reading the writing would you like to type something into the chat pane so that we can all see it so what could we use to encourage family members and friends and also people with mental health problems to come into learning in the first place Thank you, Denise. Denise says it makes it more personal. Nice, friendly voice, not intimidating for someone who's worried about returning to learning. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, they see somebody. They see somebody who is actually going to be their teacher or who is going to be the first point of contact. In many organisations, they actually see maybe a manager first before they go into a class, but then you could take it the next step. Once they come into seeing the person, you could then take them to do a meet and greet with their teacher and actually introduce them. Previous learners' feedback might help put learners' minds at ease. Absolutely, absolutely. I definitely think if you didn't have me talking as the teacher or the manager, the best thing to have would be actual learners talking, um, especially if they were able to say that they'd improve confidence or were very worried at coming in in the first place. And the other thing is that you tell them the process, or as I was trying to do in that video, to tell them what to expect in, a, in advance of going to, to that um, first meeting. I remember when I used to do interviews with learners that they had no idea when they came in that I was going to throw down a whacking great big piece pad of paper, which was, you know, the basic skills test. And as it was then, it was paper based. I'm pleased to say that they are now on a, uh, are quite often now online. My work with the probation services a few years ago showed that students, um, well, learners in the probation service were less anxious at doing the online tests than they were the paper-based tests because they only saw one question at a time. They didn't see everything um, and they only had to focus on one question at a time. And they had a higher pass rate as well uh, to, 
because of that. It's quite interesting. That was a bit of research a few years ago. So thank you for those uh, points in the chat pane. So I am now going to, because I've shown you a QR code and I've shown you a YouTube video I met, one of the um, yeah, the explaining in the video that you understand their reasons for being anxious. I think that's important as well. And giving them, thank you, just, I think it was Maria, just slipped off before I had a chance to say her name. Yes, I did put that in on purpose because I think one of the things students like is to have a reason so they can say to you, oh, I might not be able to come every week because, and it might not be because I have mental health problems, it might be because I have to look after my child or work or whatever but it gives them the option to say it in advance till they get to know you better and they can also say I'm coming because of my child rather than because of myself it doesn't matter it's getting them through the door in the first place you'll find out the real reasons as time goes on I'm absolutely convinced of that okay so as I said I'm going to go back to sharing my screen and I'm going to show you that making a video doesn't have to be long and, and complicated. What a lot of teachers worry about is that the, the videos aren't perfect. Rest assured that video had loads of bits as you probably guessed as it went on that I had to cut out. I either forgot what I was supposed to be saying or um, I went completely wrong or the dog barked or whatever. So I had to do quite a bit of editing. So I'm going to show you in YouTube that it has a basic editing tool, which is very simple to use. And I'm going to show you how to make a QR code, which honestly could not be easier. So I'm going back to my desktop and I'm going to share my screen. And I am going to go into Chrome. And I'm going to go onto YouTube. Oops, sorry. See, I told you there's so much stuff around, I'm going to knock it, knock it all over. So I'm just going to go into my YouTube account. She says she can't, can't see anything. Okay. So you would have to have a YouTube account. So you would have to sign on for a YouTube account. And um, once you've signed on for a YouTube account and you've logged in, you can access your channel and then go to video manager and that shows you the videos that you've got in here and you take any one of the videos so I'm just going to take this this isn't a video I made but it's a video I uploaded and it's got the reason I'm taking it is it's got improve this video written by the side of it now if I selected the improve this video YouTube would do it automatically for me but I just want to show you what it's actually doing so I've gone to videos I go into edit and I click, it doesn't matter which of these you uh, click on because it will um, show you all the tabs once you're in there. But the thing I need to do is enhance my video. So if I go to enhancements, what you actually get to see when it loads up is the original, I'll just stop that, the original video and then a preview of what it'll look like when you've made the changes. So I'll just show you a little bit of it. I'm going to mute it because you don't need to hear it, but you just need to see it. You can see it's juggling around a little bit, a bit, a little bit. Okay, so I can improve this straight away by going, okay, stabilize the video. Now show me it. See, it's still juggling around on the left hand side, but it's instantly smooth on the right hand side. So if you're holding a tablet and it's going all over the place, this will help you. You can also auto fix, which auto fixes all the colors. So uh, the contrast and things like that. So again, it does its best to do whatever it thinks is best for your video. Two clicks and I've already changed my video and enhanced it and made it a, a whole lot better. And then I might have done something wrong in it and need to get rid of those bits. If I select the trim option, you can watch your video. And when you get to the bit you want to delete, you pause the video split the video. Did you want to get rid of the first part? If you did, you just click delete. If not, you carry on watching it. There's the bit, it's just going over it now. I want to delete, so I pause it again and I say split and then I delete it. 
it's still there it's just hidden under those gray lines so if you change your mind you can clear and it all comes back again you go right through your video until you've finished and then you say done and that will change save it with all those uh, bits deleted out and you can save it as a new video or revert it back to the original or save it just over the top of the video you're looking at now so you can keep the original and also have the improved version I just clear all those things I don't actually want to um, and say done I don't actually want to change this video because I use it for demonstration purposes so I'm just going to revert to the original and stay with it um, and if I click back the next thing I want to show you is how do I make a um, QR code from that so if I open up another tab the QR code generator what I used on my tablet was a QR code reader the QR code generator that I use is this one but there are lots more and there are ones that you can actually get for your tablet as well it's just that this one oops this one seems very easy. Sorry, that's me knocking over and in front of me. Um, so QR code, QR stuff is a QR code generator. And all you have to do is go to the YouTube video you want. So this is the video you've just watched. Well, actually, no, this is the video you've just watched. I show it. I grab the... Um, URL and say copy so I've right clicked on the URL and copied it I go to the QR codes the QR code generator or QR stuff in my case it's not a website it's a YouTube so in the list it's got websites YouTube's or Facebook's and all sorts of other things plain text if you want it to link to those I want it to link to a YouTube video and I've got the video URL when I put the URL in here keep an eye on the QR code preview window here it might take a little while but it should change so I'm going to right click and paste and there you go it's just changed hopefully you saw that so that is the QR code that if I now hovered my tablet over it it would um, pick that up the next stage for the teacher is just to come to this download area here click on it which automatically downloads the QR code to their computer and then they can open it in the folder it's in and move it to wherever they want it to, to move to and put it onto their PowerPoints, their Word documents, etc. They could then link that, it could be on their brochures and they can have videos of learners, etc. So that's the QR code reader and I'm going to stop sharing and come back to you and just ask if there's any questions at this point if there is if you want to just type it into the chat pane that's fine otherwise I'm going to carry on thank you Denise okay I'm going to go back to sharing my um, PowerPoint with you she says, oh yeah, there it is, share screen. And I'm going to share my desktop again and show you the PowerPoint because this has already been mentioned about um, learner stories. So if I just go from current slide and Manchester Adult Education Service, um, they share learner stories on the front of their VLA. A very simple way they put them into if you use Moodle and this is Moodle they put a glossary on the front page and they have it selecting random entries from the glossary and displaying them on the right hand side of their page so if you have a look for Manchester Adult Education Service they've actually got two Moodles um, I think it ends in .org.uk uh, but I can put it in the send it through later on uh, for you you'll see that every time you refresh the screen and you learn a story comes up so that's quite a nice way of also if, if, if they're looking for a course to identify with other learners on their on their course second section so getting people onto the course the next bugbear that they've got is um, they've got registration and induction to get through 
um, and I think that links to how you support the learner in all. So registration, all that paperwork, um, induction, all that information being supplied to somebody. And I'm going to concentrate a little bit more on um, the learner support side of it because I want to talk about some of the apps that people I know are using and Portsmouth uh, City Council, Andrew's with us today. One of his uh, colleagues there, Joe, uses a uh, brain training day app with uh, some of her students. Brain training was brought in originally to make REF pilots um, have faster reactions, but the research has shown that brain training helps with better memory, getting things done, um, good mood, a better mood, trying new things, self-confidence, all those sorts of things that we might want somebody with mild depression to also be thinking about. And I've got this app on my tablet, um, so I'll show you a little bit about what it does. There are lots of brain training apps. It, this isn't the only one, um, so fear not. I need to open up. If you can't see it, if you can't get it for your particular device, I think it's available on both, but just in case it isn't. So Brain Training Day, it's called, and it's a head with three cogs in it. And I'm opening it up now. And the app itself, Jo says she uses it because when her learners come in early to a class, it allows them to calm down and to go from home life, work life, whatever life they had before they came into the classroom, into a learning mode in the classroom. Jo um, has taught lots of students with dyslexia or literacy need problems, and she says it's a nice way. And learners do like it, and it does settle them and calm, creates a calm before they start actually doing whatever's covered in the lesson themselves. She showed it to members of staff there and we all signed up and all started doing it on a daily basis as well, I have to say, um, although I've let mine lapse. Um, you can do a general test which gives you an overall score or you can pick different um, parts within the app. Um, so for example, observation, the idea is that you're looking uh, in a whole series of numbers to click on them in turn and you're doing it against the speed. So I'm looking for three, four, five, six. I'm having to concentrate because I'm having to look round. I'm trying to do it as quickly as I can, which isn't easy while I'm talking to you. That's one of the things. Another one that really needs you to concentrate, so maybe stop thinking about other worries and think about just this, is the memory one. And it's an old game that we all know. It's the old matching pairs game. So it helps people to think of strategies to remember things. Oh dear, there you go, there's one that matches. <laughs> um, the one that I find that calms me down, uh, which made Joe laugh when I said, is the intuition one. It's a timing one, um, but I can see why it would make somebody who's feeling a little bit anxious feel calmer, because the idea with it is that it's you have to guess or work out when 8.5 seconds has happened. And it gives you a timer and it starts the timer and counts to three seconds and then you have to carry on counting on your own. Well, if you're feeling anxious, you count too fast. So you actually have to take a breath and calm down and try and work it out. So here we go. And you tap. And it tells you, right, I'm a whole second, it's 7.28 I got and I haven't even done the second one and I should have been 8.5 so I was that. Great for maths as well because it talks about deviation 14%. So as a maths teacher I would be teaching maths with this app and it's, it goes through a whole series of them. So that's one of the apps that Joe uses but it's not the only app that Joe uses and if I just minimise that for a second and click on the next screen hopefully you can see it on the side anyway um, even though I've got it not in show mode she uses something called the SAM app which is um, self anxiety management on your mobile phone and I've got that one on here as well but Joe's going to talk to you via the QR code so I'm going to just snap that QR code you've already seen that so I won't show that but I'm just going to snap that QR code and play Joe talking about how she uses this app. Uh, 
Okay, so let's get that up for you. And I'll just play that for you. There's not a video here, unfortunately, it's just audio. It's just... Okay, so that was Jo talking about her use of the SAM app, and I have got the SAM app on here. So uh, it looks like uh, that. It's a little cloud with three bubbles. And if I open it up, I'll just show you those couple of things that uh, Jo was talking about. It's got it's a self management tool, so it's for learners to use. But actually, Jo was explaining to me that she does use it with learners. So she sits down and actually uses this app with some of her learners when she's doing one to ones. Um, but she talked about the breathing exercise. So if you all want to have a moment of practicing your breathing, this is the time to do it. So there's three different versions of this, but we'll do the one where you actually use the breathing exercise. And what you do is when I tap the tree in the middle, you're going to breathe in for four seconds and breathe out for eight seconds. And then you breathe in again and it just keeps going round. Um, another one on here that she leads them to is the drawing one. So here you go, there's a self-help with Sam option, which again has lots of information and stuff that you can do. But one of them is the relaxation mental one. And the one that she was talking about was the pictures piece. So it shows you lots of pictures. And let's pick the butterfly. You literally just... Use your finger and gently uncover the butterfly. And she says it really calms down learners, puts them at ease. If you're using tablets within the classroom to deliver learning, then if somebody went onto this, nobody else would necessarily know, but they would be able to support themselves. And another one she uses when she's dealing with them individually is the it's only a thought so when somebody's in a real panic about something and lots of worries are coming out they can type their worries in here so say they're worrying about i don't know money and they're worrying about an, a, a test that they've got coming up they just put keywords in here and then they can see them floating across the blue sky as clouds and just watch them disappear so that's why she uses sam the SAM app with learners. Okay, and I'll pull back into here. And if it's still okay and it's not too small, I'll just carry on from here rather than making it full screen again. Other things, other apps and websites that are to do with well-being and could be part of your induction pack. The big white wall that I know Katina will have talked about. Headspace, which I use on a daily basis, a 10-minute meditation. Does 10, it has 10 for 10, 10 free meditations for 10 days or something. You can play over and over again, or you can sign up for the full thing. But there are lots of apps that do meditation. And another one for panic attacks is one called Flowy, which again is like the four seconds in, eight seconds out breathing. It's a breathing one, but as you're doing it, you're also playing a game. And I'm going to whiz on to look at 
the course itself and how we can do things in the course. And I think Lisa Featherstone's with us and she'll recognise these quotes coming up because they're from a very dear colleague, uh, Al Alistair McNaught, who is from JISC, Subject Spe Specialist for Accessibility and Inclusion. And I think I've quoted this quote so many times because Alistair said it and I fully believe uh, believe it and I'm with him on it that a VLE is an individual organization's biggest investment in assistive technology if you have an easy to use VLE one that is used effectively it will meet a huge range of needs of a wide range of learners and it doesn't need to be a Moodle VLE you might use Google Apps for education you just might have an online space an online wiki but you can still do the same things. If you remove the barriers for some of your learners, you will improve access for 100% of your learners. And hopefully you'll agree with me on this one. The other thing I want to show you is something that Alistair did for some research he did, but he shared with the Holex members, uh, was this chart. It doesn't have mental health problems on there, but they did some research about what types of learning input learners with different um, learning difficulties and disabilities preferred all right and when they combined it all the type of learning that most learners liked was the video the audio the interactivity and image-based stuff what they didn't like was text across the board when you look at everybody if you think about yourself do you want a wad of papers or would you rather watch a three minute video or do a quiz or a game or something like that and I'm with them on that one so I agree for students with mental health problems who have difficulty concentrating and have difficulty uh, anxiety have short-term memory problems whatever you're delivering in the classroom they need to be able to access again and maybe again and maybe again if they're not going to t attend every week then they need to be able to um, do learning at home at a time when they can do it. Um, they need other ways because one of the fears that they're going to have is that they come to a lesson and then they can't make the next lesson. Well, how hard is it to come back to the third lesson? And what if they miss two weeks? How hard is it to get to the, the, you know, the fourth lesson along? Maybe you could use something like Holex to do a tutorial with them or to do tutorials with a number of students that have missed as a group session, but also having the learning environment and having an easy way for them to do that. And I've got my tablet here. There is a Moodle mobile app. You can look at the Moodle on your mobile. I have marked students' work on my mobile phone. Um, you can also, as a student, upload things onto Moodle. One of the other things in Moodle, if you are using Moodle as a VLA, is that there's a, there's a profile area for each student. And in each course, there's within the profile area, there's a notes option for the later versions of Moodle. And that allows members of staff to either talk with a learner or to talk with other members of staff who are connected with that course to talk about how learners can be supported. So have a look at the notes option. It's quite a good learner support um, thing. So that's some things. I do think you should make use of VLEs if you're working with mental health. I do think that you should make whatever you do in the classroom available online. And I do think that you should also think about um, how you deliver those materials. So I've got complete little learning objects here uh, within this Moodle. I might quickly show you that in a minute at the end if we've got time. But I just want to show you something that's quite like QR codes, which is called Orasma. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next thing. Most teachers produce worksheets of some description. So here's a maths worksheet with some bits and pieces, um, some questions on for learners to do. If you encourage learners to use mobile devices while they're studying, they could listen to music. They could do a breathing exercise without others being aware that they're doing it they could access support. And here I've got a QR code of sorts. Uh, I've got what's called an aura. And um, it's the picture here 
a calculating perimeters picture. And on my mobile phone, which I need, on my mobile tablet, which I need to again show you, I've got something called Orasma. Ooh, I'm not <laughs> How likely am I to recommend Windows 10? Well, I am, if it, because it's definitely better than the last version of Windows I had. Um, so, Orasma on my tablet. If I just point, ooh, she says, I've just taken the, oh, I've just taken a picture by accident. If I just point at the screen, I might actually have to open the document up for this, but we'll see if I can do it off the screen. There we go. And I get the app open. Oh, it's there we go. So it's very like um, a QR code. There's something there. It's opened up my camera and it's trying to grab something. Oh, it's done it. So it's grabbed that picture and it's automatically gone and found the video associated with that picture. So I've got a video showing straight on the screen just by pointing my tablet at a document. Augmented reality. So I can find out how to do perimeters. I don't have to find the courage uh, to ask the teacher. I can self-help. I can have a look myself. I've got home. You can set that as homework. I can check myself. So I'm not sitting at home worrying about how I did something. Now, come on, that's... Oh, you can't see that. I haven't got it in the... In the that's not just going to support anybody with mental health problems. That's going to support all your learners. There we go. I'll just get it open. Once you've got it open, you can move it around, but there you go. You can see it properly now. Straight on, straight onto my Word document. In this case, it's a PowerPoint, but it doesn't, it shows you the same thing. Okay, I'm going to stop that and just shuffle down to the next slide because it's another example of this. I've been working with an organisation called Peter on a Learning Futures project with some engineering staff who had no um, technical skills, no knowledge with the uh, with um, using tablets and things like that, and so I'm just worried that I've lost you again. Can you just let me know whether you're still there or not? Can you still see me? Could somebody just type something in the chat? actually see chat there so that's not going to help oh okay oh katina's back perhaps we lost katina oh okay lovely thank you okay i can see that all right so i've got a, your internet connection is unstable okay i'll try and do this quickly so i'm going to show you orasma again and i'm going to pop it onto this picture this time So this is um, an engineer, no techie experience at all, never used a tablet at all before in his life. Now we have turned our 12 mil diameter on our shaft, 12 mil, yeah. We've hopefully turned it 12 mil plus over to 5 to allow some room for polishing. If you look at the drawing now, you'll see that we need to produce a taper next. And we need to produce a taper which leaves 8 mil diameter on the end. If you further look at the drawing, you'll also see that the taper starts 25 millimetres in from the end of the part. Okay, that's a guy that had never used technology, never used a tablet, etc. So um, he had to learn how to use a tablet, how to record himself, how to edit in YouTube, and how to use Orasma and make his videos. He's making them all the time now. It didn't take him long. We had one session, um, training session on YouTube and the editor, and he had one session on using Orasmus Studio, a very short session on using Orasmus Studio, which you're going to get in the next five minutes. He also used this device behind me, which I sh sort of showed earlier, to record himself. He used this thing. It's called a swivel camera. A swivel device he put in a tablet into it and all that and he just captured video using it this thing now you can see it's capturing video the swivel device itself is about 400 pounds um, but actually 
you can download the Swivel app, S-W-I-V-L, absolutely free and use it on a tablet um, without having it connected to this thing here. This thing here, what it does, if I turn it on, we'll try and turn it on. It allows you to, so you can see it's all moving all over the place now. It allows you to, ignore that, allows you to record yourself. So wherever this thing moves, which is the microphone, it kind of tries to follow it. It's not going to behave at the moment. That's typical, isn't it? Oh, there you go. It'll follow it. So if you move around the room, it moves around the room with you. And it means that you can manage yourself and you can self-record. So that's what he used to record. And then he used Orasmus Studio to actually, I'm going to hide that a moment, Orasmus Studio to actually create those things. So in the last few minutes, I'm just going to show you Orasmus Studio, except I got checked off, so I'm going to have to try and remember how to log in. Have a sneaky little method of remembering. Right, so Orasmus Studio it works with that Orasmus app. So as a teacher, you create an account in Orasmus Studio and you log in. Hopefully with the right password. Okay, I've already got an account. But when you log in, this is what it looks like. And what we're doing is we're going to create one of those auras. So we create a new aura and an aura had a picture on my Word document or my PowerPoint, which had a overlay or um, the video. So the picture acts as a trigger, it's known as the trigger. So you get click or upload a trigger image. So you upload an image. I've got one, so I'm just gonna go and select one. I've already uploaded my trigger image and I wanted to just show you two trigger images. Here's an image of a door and here's an image with a bit of writing on as well. What um, or asthma, those auras don't really like is bare images with not very much on and they don't like repeated patterns because they need to grab something within your picture. So that's why I've added a bit of text as well and some colour. So I'm going to select that picture. There it is. First part done. Click next. I now need to give the video. I need to upload a video. I've already uploaded this to save time. So I need to select that video. And it's just loading and it's this one here that I'm going to select. It's um, it's um, a Maths Everywhere video that are Creative Commons, you can use them, but you do have to upload your videos actually into Orasma. Now I can have my video appear next to the picture when it shows or I can just put it completely over the top. I kind of tend to put it completely over the top. So upload it, position it on the screen. Guess what, that's it. So here you are, estimating. Give it a title. Yep, happy with the title. You can put in some hashtags and things like that if you want. You can preview it. I can save it. And I can then share it with a great big wide world. And it's just sharing now. There we go, I've now got something, or I should have something called estimating lengths, one of my auras. If I just click on this, let me demonstrate, hopefully it'll work, but let me also show you from the app how you would follow me so that you could actually look at this yourself, because some of you might have downloaded that app. So I need to get my little camera back up again. So here I am, so I'm going to select the Orasma app, which I've previously downloaded. Okay, now like Twitter, you need to follow people. It's, it instantly goes into grab mode, but you need to actually follow me to be able to see this. So you come down to the little A symbol at the bottom, which opens up the menu. So I've now got a menu down the bottom. And I click on the magnifying glass so I can search for auras. I can search for auras or I can search for people's channels and that's what I want to do. I want to search for people's channels and then I would type in Sally Betts. Or if you want to see the Peter Engineers one you need to type in Peter Engineers. And once I've done that I just say done and it'll look through all the Orasma 
um, channels to see if it can find something saying Sally Betts. And yes, it's found something saying Sally Betts. It's lucky, isn't it? If I click on that, it comes up with the option following. If you've not followed me already, it will just say follow. And if you click on that circle, it will change to following. And then when you see this image on the screen, you'll be able to look at it. And to go back to looking at it, you simply click the box there. And then we should be able to look at that video. There you go, it's straight in. And it's playing, oh, you can't see it because I'm not showing you. <laughs> there you go, straight in, playing the video. And it's off, I can't get far enough away from it. There you go, it's playing the video. Or it's trying to play the video. Estimating maths. And I can watch the video. So that's it, that is my presentation. Um, I'm now happy to take questions. We've got some questions in the chat, Sally, so you might want to have a quick look at those. Okay. And also, if people want to ask, um, you know, verbally rather than in the chat, they just need to unmute themselves, their little microphone symbol in the left, but not all at once, so kind of gauge if there's a pause and jump in. Oh, Denise asked, how did I embed it in the document? How did I embed what in the document? The Orasma or the QR code? Did you share the picture to be grabbed? Yes, basically, when it made that picture in Orasma, uh, the one that I clicked on to open up and use, I then used a tool that comes on most computers called the snipping tool to just do a screen capture but you could screen capture using uh, the print screen on your keyboard and then crop it down to the size the picture must be exactly the same um, if you're going to use them on posters on the walls um, I wouldn't laminate um, sometimes it works with laminating it um, but sometimes also you get the glare um, which doesn't help yeah so what else have we got Does that oh, okay so uh, Katina shared a case study on augmented reality yes the learning futures projects uh, Peter engineer used uh, augmented reality and as part of that, I produced a whole series of how-to guides on QR codes, the YouTube editor, and augmented reality, which will be available to everybody via the Excellence Gateway at some point um, at the end of October. I'm not quite sure when, but keep, keep an eye out, or I'll tell Katina when they're there so that you can uh, be directed to them. I'm not sure whether I'm able to share them with you yet. I can ask. Uh, if so, you can have all of those. So you could use them for CPD with staff or for yourselves. <laughs> yeah, Erasmus has proved a huge hit. And if I go right back to the court offer right at the beginning, um, Wolverhampton ACL are using Erasmus to um in family learning they've been using it so that they can access learning when they're working in the community easily but also the course brochure now acts as a picture an aura that can be a trigger image that then links to a video so that's a really nice thing do you need a special app to read qr codes yes you do um, some of the later devices come with a qr code reader already on them um, so um, you might already have one yourself I've been using something called Norton snap and uh, Katina will send out these PowerPoints afterwards so you'll see see them but I've been using Norton snap the reason I use Norton snap is simply because I think it's got some um, iris checking software in it so that it actually checks to see whether where you're being sent to is safe uh, a problem to your to your machine what's about learners who do not have smartphones or tablets yeah that is an issue um, 
it could be that you could have some within your organization that could be there on loan. Um, I know some organizations, and particularly schools, use this approach where if you need additional support, if, well, if, you, if you're stuck working something out, you can go to a table and you can find some sort of resource that would help you. And that's one of those resources might be a tablet that you can pick up and actually use. So it might be that you could have one somewhere in a classroom that people could use and that you'd downloaded the apps to as well. We'd need to know if it was in a brochure that that did act as an Orasma clip and how to use it. So on the handouts I've met, I've put, um, you know, download Orasma and follow whoever. It was, it is dead straightforward to download Norton Stat. Great. Yeah, I think um, apps certainly are being used. The Isle of Wight are using apps um, on a course um, to help with literacy and numeracy skills while you're working with horses and they take the iPads out into the stables and they've created lots of learning activities that then link back to their Moodle and the students are loving that and that's to build confidence. Uh, quite a few of those students have gone through uh, depressions or mental he have mental health problems, anxiety. Some of them have LDD needs. Sally, could I just share something on my screen for a moment? I think I'm able to do it. Of course. Um, what it was, was do I need to hand back something no, to no, you? No, I think it's fine. So in a minute, you should be able to tell me that you can um, see my screen. And it was just that last night I tweeted this. Um, so it was on, let me just get rid of the, the chat for a minute. Um, so can you see my screen now? Mm -hmm. Um, but it was this tweet here which came from the mental health um, and so I retweeted it because it was about the NHS apps and I know that most people um, will remember from if they're all part of the pilots the inception meeting that um, you know we were saying the NHS was now reviewing those apps and um, kind of saying um, how important and useful they are not most importantly for people who won't access mental health services um, for fear of stigma etc but what was really interesting was that this week the uh, mental health has posted this um, which is essentially questioning the issue of whether some of these apps work or not so i just wanted to recommend that tweet to people and to click the link i mean it's quite a lengthy article which i kind of read last night but they are talking about whether there's kind of some room for concern around it and different apps so I, I wonder to what degree we might want to enter that debate really um, or certainly kind of have it as a thread um, in terms of what we're doing but the other one was that it has this really helpful video on how the big white wall works and I know lots of people ask me about it and then are never brave enough to go near it because you have to register as yourself so I thought you might actually find um, looking at that uh, quite useful and then there's a kind of paper down here that you can read um, that really is questioning this whole issue of if we're moving towards evidence-based mental health then where do these kind of fit into it um, and that's a very pertinent question for those of us who are working um, on the pilots really so that was kind of all I wanted to share back to you Are you still there, Sally? Thank you for joining us. I am, yeah. Okay. Anybody else got any other questions or anything? <laughs> well done, Denise. She's downloaded all the apps as I talked. She's off to play as well. <laughs> Thank goodness yeah. we didn't do this webinar then before people had to do their monitoring returns or Ipsos would have never got the information. <laughs> okay, that's great. Thank you all very much. Just to say, don't forget, lots more um, of these webinars and obviously we can get in touch with Sally um, if we want kind of more information or another one further on. Um, you will get certainly can get the PowerPoint 
perfect. And um, yes, I'll, I'll make sure Katina has that. I will ask if we can have permission to release those handouts, but they're currently going through quality assurance processes. So the handouts on how to do all of this stuff, the editing in YouTube, QR codes, augmented reality, will be out in the next few weeks. So if you don't mind hanging on for a few weeks for them, then they will come. But you have got the recorded webinar, so you could have a, you could go back and have a quick flick through the webinar to see. Okay, and we will up, um, we've recorded this, so I'll just check the recording. This is, you've been wonderful with muting your mics, actually. This is the best sound I've had for a while. Um, and then we'll upload that today to the um, MHFE YouTube. So if you go onto the website and go to YouTube, you'll find there's a playlist for all of these webinars. The one from Monday is up there already. Um, and there are, as you know, webinars every day till the end of the month. I'm sure Caroline is just going to crawl with embarrassment when I mentioned that hers is the very last one on the 30th about her biz pilot and I hope most of you uh, will consider joining that one. Apologies to anybody who um, didn't manage to get in but yeah the MHFE website has a channel manager. I'm amazed you've not found it before. <laughs> okay I think that's probably it then. Thank you to Sally and thank you to everybody else indeed. Okay thank you bye-bye. <laughs>